So hello, this is Kimberly K. Labou, CEO and founder of Labou Publishing Enterprise. Welcome to the fifth segment of the LPE Author Chat series, where we are interviewing self-published authors who have agreed to share their journey of self-publishing in hopes that they may inspire others to take the leap of faith to publish their own masterpiece. So our special guest author on today is author Tammy Carpenter. She Hello. is the author of Speaks, Speak, Life Speaks, I'm sorry, Life Speaks, A Journey to Recovering or Recognizing Divine Providence in Your Life. So welcome to the LPE Author Chat series, Tammy. Hey, thank you so much for having, having me. I'm excited to be sharing with you tonight. Awesome. So we don't have a lot of time, so we always just jump right in. So my first question to you is, tell us or not a question a statement just tell us a little bit about your book um life speaks and why you chose to write it okay um life speaks is some personal chronicles of very distinct events in my life um it covers about a 10 to 15 year period in my life and i tell some very personal stories um and share not only the story, but the lessons that God taught me through those stories. So hence the title Life Speaks because I learned oftentimes after those moments, how intentional God was being with those times in my life. And that was one of the things that really prompted me to write the story was because it was undeniable in many situations that God had orchestrated my steps and caused things to happen to get me from one place to another. So just to encourage people that sometimes in our lowest points and our most difficult points, that God is still orchestrating our steps. So life is speaking, even when it seems like death is present, rejection is present, separation is present, all kind of other things that God is really intentional. So to encourage, um, I have a, a, a heart for women and especially young women. So we know that life is not the fairy tale that many of us thought that it was going to be when we were little girls but as you reach those difficult places there's still triumph in the difficult places because god is intentional with our lives so so true now always you know talk about how our lives is not even it's, our life is not even about us it's not yeah. even for us like everything that we encounter has a bigger meaning. Um, we just don't know it while we're in it. You know, they say it's hard to see the picture when you're inside the frame. And yes, so it's hard yes. to see the future down the road when you're going through those various trials um, in the moment. Right, so, right. Um, yeah. So one of the things that I read in your book um, that I related to immediately was when you talked about um, relocating. And you said relocating is more than a change in scenery. Location matters, environment matters. Mm -hmm. You never you never fully know what awaits you beyond change. Your cert your certainty is in knowing God has a plan for your life and all things will work together for your good. And so I really love that and it resonated with me because I had a conversation with my oldest son on Thursday night, I think it was. He called mm -hmm. me. And um, he lives in Maryland. Of course, I live in Hawaii. And so we were having this conversation about when I moved from Maryland to Hawaii. And he said to me, he said, Mom, he said, I literally saw you transform from darkness to light. Wow. And that just touched my heart. Um, because I never, I've, I had never heard him say that. And I've been here for about two and a half years now. And mm -hmm. I never heard him say anything like that. But he said, you don't know how happy it made me as your son to see you that happy. Wow. So, wow. Um, so talk a little bit about how important it is for us to step outside of our comfort zone um, and move on to bigger and better things. Um. It is necessary, um, and as a result, because there was, there's actually two moves I talk about in the book. That one was in the first chapter where I moved to another city, and then ended up having to move back home. Um, and I titled that chapter "Necessary Transition" because both moves were a requirement for where I needed to be and what I needed to be doing. And, you know, oftentimes where we are is comfortable because we know everybody, we're comfortable with the scenery, we know how to get around. 
um, but to move to a different place and try to establish a different community. Um, it's difficult, but it's often after the time or after you get there, or when you see some of the fruit of the move that you realize, okay, God, you really were um, orchestrating these steps for me. So if you feel an unction, and I would encourage anyone listening, if you feel an unction, um, to make some changes. And um, uh, oftentimes we don't see all of the pieces fall in place when we get the initial prompt to change, but sometimes we have to make the steps and that's our trust in God. And then things will fall in place that we didn't, even things that we didn't even realize we need, he will make sure that provision is there because we obey him. So um, I, one of the things that I shared when I did the book release um, for Life Speaks was one of the things that I have learned is you have to obey God at all costs. And sometimes that's the cost of comfort. That's the cost of um, from one residence to another, whatever the cost is, you have to obey God at all costs. Yes, yeah. true. And when you talked about the, um, you know, moving to a new place and, you know, that fear of not knowing where, you know, if you're going to be able to get around. My best friend just visited about a week or so ago, and she was just amazed when I was taking her from one place to the other. And she's like, it's like you've been here forever. And so <laughs> never really yeah. has taught me that it's never really as scary as we think it is, that that stuff is in our mind. And until we step outside of that and do what God has called us to do, we never know what awaits us. Um, exactly. I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah, that, that's a pretty major move. I mean, you shifted yeah. several states <laughs> and time zones. So yeah, that's yeah. a major move. Yeah, I absolutely <laughs> love it. And you know, five years ago, 10 years ago, no one could have ever told me that my life would look like this. So wow. life certainly does speak. Yes, um, yes. So let's talk a little bit about the actual writing process for you. Um, how did you know that it was time for you to write this book? Um, it was really one of those things for me that God would not stop talking to me about. <laughs> um, because some of the stories are so personal um, and involving family, involve, involving um, you know people very close to me, I didn't want to relive many of those moments. And, you know, for anyone that writes or have written, when you write personal stories, it's like you relive those moments when you write about them. Didn't want to deal with that. Didn't want to deal with the, what people would think or just exposing that level of my story to people. So it it was, there were some, some painful moments. Um, and as a result, I drug my feet <laughs> um, a lot. So I knew once certain things happened that I would have to write about it. Um, there were more things that continued to happen that helped complete the story, but it was still um, me being like, okay, God, can we not do this another way? And I tried other ways. I tried doing a blog. I tried putting little notes on Facebook. Well, God, if I just tell this little piece and use this as an encouragement, that'll be enough. I'm sharing, you know, what I went through. And he was like, no, you got to write the book. You got to write the book. And so, yeah, it was it was a growth journey for me to be able to trust him that if you're going to want me to release this personal information, then it's for someone else. And um, I'm so very grateful of the testimonies that I've heard from various people after reading the book about different parts of my story that they can relate with and how it has helped them on their journey. So that has made it worth it. But the writing process, um, I wouldn't tell anyone that it's easy because it's not. <laughs> it's definitely not when you're sharing a personal story. Yeah. It really does force you to dig deep. Mm -hmm. Like you said, you can touch on some areas and um, and also tap into some things that maybe you have buried, you know, right. you over it, you right. thought it was done with, and it can bring up, you know, certain emotions. But I also, you know, just encourage people to push through. Push mm -hmm. through because like I said, our lives are not about us you know, at all. be given away. So I'm so glad you did that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. you. you Push through. Um, so my next question to you was going to be about any obstacles that you faced during the writing process. And, and I guess that was one of them for you is being able to push through that. But anything else that sticks out for you um, as an obstacle during your writing journey or during your publishing journey? Um, yeah, initially, because I knew that I was not 
just wanting to tell my story. I'm really at the core. I'm a teacher, um, encourager, connector. So it wasn't like, oh, I just want to pin my story and let people read all about my life. Um, I knew that I had to write it to where I could share the teaching component to it. So I struggled a bit with how do I structure a book? Well, I need to tell my story, but I also need to teach in it. Um, because, you know, a lot of memoirs or bibliographies or, you know, I'm just going to tell you who I am and what I've been through. And I didn't just want to do that. So one of the things that I did was I hired a writing coach. Um, and that helped me tremendously um, because it helped me structure my story. It helped me outline my story. And then um, had someone to bounce my um, ideas and thoughts off of as I wrote so that I uh, could stay true to how I wanted to write, but also give me good feedback as to the storytelling part of it. So that helped me be able to structure the book with a uh, end result that I was pleased with um, because again, I could tell the story and then challenge the readers at the end of each chapter like I do with the question that makes them self-reflect. So it, it helped me deliver what I desired to deliver. So a writing coach was very, very instrumental for me. Um, and then in the publishing process, she was also there to answer some of the questions because she had um, at that time, I think written at least one book, I think. Now she has about three or four that she's written, but um, so she had the experience so I could ask her, you know, about the different processes and um, the printing and the um, uploads and all the things that you have to do to get your your book to the final print. So she was a, a very, very good resource for me to have. Yeah, yeah. definitely yeah. do that um, because some people get stuck. You know, and when you have that writing coach present, that's somebody that can help to nudge you along the way. Like you said, answer questions and help you work on and complete your project. So it makes no sense to, you know, stay stuck and not write your book, you know, because when it gets hard, you'll be tempted to put it down and say, okay, maybe I'm not supposed to do this. But that writing coach is there to help you on, uh, to stay on track and to get you through that process. And I promise it's <laughs> worth it. It's so worth it. Yes, um, yes. Yeah. So how have you been able to use your book since publishing it? You know, um, has it allowed you to do anything beyond the publishing? Um, well, initially, the, the first year um, I did two book release events just to I did it one here in the city that I live in and I did one in another city that I used to live in. Um, and then um, different vending opportunities to get myself and my story in front of people. And um, I hosted a few other events that I would call um, talk and tea because a lot of people, after they read the book, they're like, we got questions. We want to know, you know, give us more details about this and that. So these were sit down forum type sessions for people who had either read the book or had similar stories that they could ask questions. Um, because, again, after they read some of this and if they're going through it in their own way, they want to know um, just a little bit deeper insight. So just getting because again like you said it's, this whole journey is not about us so I, you don't write the book for book sales you don't write the book for accolades you write the book to touch lives so if you are untouchable to the people that you know want to know, know more about your story then you you just put you know words on paper so um trying to make myself available with people that can identify so that if they are stuck somewhere in their healing process if I can help somewhere along the way to encourage them or to help them move along um, to be there to do that. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Now, I love you know that you said you pretty much made your book interactive and um, reached out to your reader. So it wasn't just about you telling your story and that's it. Um, you found a way to bring them into you know, your story and then be able to help them afterwards. So I like that. Um, I love books that do that, that it's not because it's not all about us. Right. right, right. <laughs> and how you can help your reader in the type of book that you have written, um, how you can service them. So exactly. I, love, and I love the um, would you say it was something in tea conversations in tea? Talking tea. Talk, yeah. Talk. I, yeah. I hosted <laughs> events called Life Speaks Talking Tea. I so think that was awesome. um talk portion is the forum session and I have a um, sister friend of mine who um, does meditation and she does custom teas oftentimes with her 
meditation segment. So she would bring in a custom tea blend um, because a lot of times after you're talking about heavy topics, just to be able to breathe, release some of that. So we brought that that part in to um, let people walk away with the right mindset. Because, you know, if you dig up issues or dig up personal stories, you leave feeling like you did five years ago when it happened. So the tea part came from her custom tea blend that she brings when she does meditation segments. I love that. that whole idea. Yeah. <laughs> Not just about writing a book, but just how you can use it to reach out and be able to do more with it. And I think that's such a creative way um, mm-hmm. to do that because like you said, when people read your book, sometimes they want that extended conversation. They want to be able to mm-hmm. connect with you. They want to be able to ask questions, you know, what does mm-hmm. this mean? Does that mean and so the fact that you've made yourself available you know even even after the publishing process i think is phenomenal um so tell us are there other books in your future there are <laughs> um kind of going back through the same process of like you know the feet dragging but i'm really trying to push to get the second one out okay by the end of this year so oh, wow. um i have a Second book that I'm working on that the title is going to be Church Hurt Healed Me, because one of the things that I talk about is my experience with church hurt. And I know it's a taboo topic for some, um, but I'm just of the belief that you can't tell people what didn't hurt them, but you can tell them that they're not crippled by it. So um, not not to hang up the church hurt umbrella and say, you know, all of us suffer from church hurt, um, but how do you move forward from that? And honestly, for me, it revealed a lot of things in me that I didn't even know were there after that process. So to expound on some areas in my life that I have since grown from and since healed from after that situation is what the next book is going to talk about. And then there's a devotional um, that, I'm, that I'm working on as well. So want to get the church her book out by the end of this year. Um, so I'm trying to push myself to to get that deadline and then the other one shortly thereafter. That's great. Yes. Post it on that. When it I sure will. <laughs> um, I get ready to ask you. Oh, it flew. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I know what it was. Okay. So when you wrote your first book, did you have any idea that you would write a second or a third? Um, not completely. Um, I did kind of prepare for it because since I self-published, um, I actually have a consulting company called Effectual Concepts. So I published my book through my own company. So I actually purchased enough ISBNs to do a few more books. Um, and that was partly because again, with me being a teacher, I already had a workbook that I had published that I was going to redo under my new branding. So I wanted that those um, ISBN numbers to be there available for that. So I didn't um, know how many more, but I did know that there probably was going to be more because I don't know about you. I I kind of drug into the writer title, you know, even though, you know, you're writing blogs or you, you know, writing encouragement notes, it's like you still don't want to tell people that you're a writer. (laughs) So, um, but I think as as a teacher, one of the effective ways in getting your materials out is in written form. So, um, yeah, I I know there's at least two more and we'll see what the Lord says after that, after these two. Yeah, I like that. I like how you said um, you don't want to tell people that you're a writer. <laughs> Accountability. Yeah, it seems like a whole different level of expectation comes when, with the title writer, like like you're supposed to be doing it all the time. It's like, well, I have a whole nother full time situation over here. Exactly. But, um, but, but yeah, it, get it done though. So yes, yes, to get yeah. the message out, I will embrace the title to get the message out. <laughs> so we have maybe about nine minutes left. So okay. I want to ask you, what advice would you give to aspiring writers? Um, seek out the resources that you know you need and even the ones that you don't know you need. Um, and I say that from, you know, a lot of times when we are working on something, for some reason, the first things that we want to do is be quiet about it because people aren't going to understand and people can steal my idea or whatever the case may be. But a lot of times people can't come to your aid because they don't know what you need. And if you are writing for the first time, 
you may not even know what you need. Cause I didn't know, even though I knew I was working on a book, I didn't really know that I needed a writing coach, but I was still in the process of dragging my feet. And I happened to be at a networking event that a friend of mine hosted. And the coach that I ended up hiring was the speaker that day. And mm -hmm. after hearing what she did, I was like, okay, <laughs> I need to make that connection. But it wasn't until I heard I was in that environment and heard about her services that I, that I connected with the need. Mm -hmm. um, but then I had to also be willing to admit I'm working on a book and I need some help. Um, so I was able to also, I have some other people in my life that have written some books. I was able to go to them and use them um, as resources during the writing process to read some of the chapters and, you know, help review some things. So being vocal, if you really mm -hmm. want something, um, you know, it's almost like a mother carrying a baby. Once she knows, you know, I got this baby, she won't, she's a proud pregnant mother most times. She wants everyone to know I'm carrying this baby. Wait till you see it. Um, but a lot of times with our visions, we want to carry them and keep them covered until they manifest. But nobody can can sow into you. No, no one can seed into you in any form, be it knowledge or finances, without them even knowing that you're trying to birth something. So That's being vocal about what you're trying to bring forth, that way your resources can arise to you if they're not already around you. That is great. Um, and that's one of the things I, I do tell when I coach people through the book writing process, you know, as soon as we get that cover designed, you know, which is for, oftentimes well before it's time mm -hmm. for the book to drop. But I tell them, you know, put it out there, put it on social media, tell people, mm -hmm. hey, I'm writing a book. You know, um, my book is coming soon because, again, that brings that level of accountability. It, it pushes does. You to go, yeah, to go forward. And then you also get that support. Like you talked about mm -hmm. that from others and you see how excited people are to be able to support you and so right. tell people, don't write in secret you know <laughs> don't write in secret exactly put it out there let people know what you're doing and um and use that energy to fuel you to keep going you know mm -hmm. so that's exactly. awesome advice so tell people um where they can purchase your books and how they can connect with you okay so Here's <laughs> Life Speaks. It is available um, on various digital outlets. So if you if you like the electronic versions, it's on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, iBooks. It's on various digital outlets, but you can also order the print co copy from Amazon or Barnes and Noble, or they can go to my website, which is effectualconcepts.com, and order a copy there because we do direct fulfillment through my own website. Oh, okay. Awesome. That is so great. So any last words you want to share with our guests? We have quite a few people watching. Um, lots of people sending you love, talking about push, you know, get it done. Um, yeah, so lots of great things going on here. And obey. Somebody said obey God at all costs. Yes, um, yes. So much great information you've already shared. Are there any last nuggets you want to leave with our viewing audience? Um. I would just tell them to to trust God with the vision that he's giving you, be it a book, be it an event, be it a new business. Um, if you really want to increase your faith and see God move in um, unparalleled ways, he does that when you trust him. And, and trust him is not often being still. We have to often move forward with our trust in him. Um, and that's where the obedience comes in. So. You know, I since I've written this book and um, even before then, when I tell you, you know, it really life speaks is more than a title of a book. It's like really my life mantra because he shows up and does things and makes other things make sense after he's done things. So, you know, I still, you know, whether I'm talking to the book, talking about the book directly or not, I'm like life speaks, life speaks because he's he really is charting our course. And if we can trust him. And the small things, the bigger things won't seem as big. Because if he um, if he showed up when you needed a healing, if he showed up when you needed a financial breakthrough, if he showed up just when you needed an encouraging word, why won't he show up to fulfill the vision that he's given you? Um, so yeah. trust his faithfulness. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> I almost wanted to shout. <laughs> Well, that's 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 probably the minister side of me that just kicked yes. in a little bit. Let me let me reel that back in because that, that's not this platform. <laughs> that's good stuff. So 
So thank you so much, Tammy, for taking the time out to share with our viewers on today and to just encourage others who might be thinking about, you know, um, stepping into the journey of a writer. So really appreciate you taking the time and spending the time with us on today. No problem. Thank you so much for having me and thank you for giving not only myself, but other authors this platform. So um, your time and efforts in this are greatly appreciated. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Okay, guys, again, this is Kimberly K. Labou with Labou Publishing Enterprise. We thank you for attending another segment of the LPE Author Chat series. Stay tuned because there's another one coming right up in about 30 minutes. Thank you so much. Take care and be blessed. Thank you.